Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you could overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll get to your calls in our second segment today. We've got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Dr. Elena George. She's an ENT, ear, nose, and throat specialist, and she is a wealth of information about the healthcare business. She's written a really cool book. We've had her on before. Her book is called Big Medicine, The Cost of Corporate Control and How Doctors and Patients Working Together Can Rebuild a Better System. Dr. Elena George will be with us at the bottom of the hour, and we'll uh, talk about big medicine corporate medicine and what you can do to keep yourself healthy without having to interact with the mainstream corporate medical model. That'll be at the bottom of the hour. We'll take your calls in our second segment at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can purchase longevity products off our website or by calling the Brightside Ben phone team. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team if you're an entrepreneur, if you're entrepreneurially, entrepreneurially minded. If you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, you want to work out of your home, make your own hours. Earn thank you checks for helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You do want to check out the Longevity business. If nutritional supplementation or the Longevity products have helped you in your life, spread the word. Share the information and make money at the same time. Call the phone team at 866-735-2470 for more information. Or you can sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Also would like to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Omega, Truth uh, Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and the award-winning Truth Transdermal C Serum voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, oil, Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We've got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Dr. Elena George. We'll get your calls in our next segment, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've been talking about frequencies, vibrations, electrical vibrations, and health. Last program, we left off talking about Dr. Royal Raymond Reif and his remarkable frequency-generating machine that eliminated, killed bacteria, eliminated bacterial infections, and also effectively treated cancer, as described in the book by Barry Lines, L-I-N-E-S, called uh, Royal Raymond Rife and the Cancer Cure That Worked. Cancer Cure That Worked. And not only did Dr. Rife's machines cure cancer, 
if a frequency that was associated with good health was applied over the frequency of any sick cell, any sick tissue, not even a cancerous sick cell or cancerous tissue, just a regular sick cell. If you put a, a frequency of health on a, on a tissue or on a cell that wasn't healthy, that tissue or that cell responded as well. So it seems that by reestablishing the healthy frequency of a tissue, or a cell, in essence, restoring its vibration back to coherence, healing could be accomplished. And this was shown back in the 1920s and 1930s by Dr. Reif. And you would think that these discoveries would be hailed as a health breakthrough by those who were supposedly interested in our healing, that is, proponents of the modern medical model. But of course, that is not what happened. In 1939, five years after Dr. Reif's landmark cancer research, the head of uh, the Southern California American Medical Association, who was a guy who really supported Dr. Reif and doctors, Dr. Reif's work. He was, named, uh, he was a physician named Dr. Milbank, Milbank Johnson, a professor of physiology and clinical medicine at USC and chairman of the Special Medical Research Committee that had commissioned the successful study. He was mysteriously poisoned, and all of his research, which documented the cancer, uh, cancer reversal cases, all went missing. Hmm, interesting. Next, the drug companies tried to buy off Dr. Reif. They tried to buy all his work. They tried to buy his research. They tried to buy his machinery. Dr. Reif wasn't into it. He said, no way. And then Dr. Reif's labs were mysteriously destroyed in a fire. Then another physician, a guy named Dr. Neems, N-E-M-E-S, who had duplicated Reif's anti-cancer result, was killed in yet another mysterious fire, which destroyed all his research papers. Hmm. Coincidences. In 1939, another suspicious fire destroyed uh, the laboratory of a guy named Dr. John Burnett, who was an osteopath and a researcher who was validating Dr. Reif's work, according to the New York Times, an article that was uh, a contemporary article from, uh, from 1939. The uh, laboratory, Dr. Bernard, Dr. Burnett's lab, which burnt down, was called a mystery workshop. This is what the New York Times called it, a mystery workshop. And they said the fire caused the loss of all the equipment and records and experiments uh, that Dr. Burnett had hoped would make the world a better place. And then, in 1971, Dr. Reif himself died in a further suspicious circumstance after he was accidentally given a lethal dose of Valium and alcohol in a hospital after he had a heart attack. This is unbelievable. This whole idea of health and frequency is so powerful that it freaked the medical model out despite the fact and, and by the way, uh, uh, mo uh, in addition to freaking the mo modern medical model out, they weren't satisfied. They had to uh, diminish it, demean it, dismiss it as, a cr as crackpot medicine. Regular doctors who used Rife machines could lose their license to practice medicine. They were violating standards of care. But once we understand the nature of living beings as frequency beings, as vibratory beings, and we understand the nature of health as a, a function of vibration, disease as a function of vibration, it all makes sense. You can think of frequency like the swinging of a pendulum going back and forth. One movement back and forth is a frequency of one. Two movements are a frequency of two. Three movements is a frequency of three. Frequency is measured by movements back and forth per second. So when a pendulum goes one back and forth one time per second, it's got a frequency of one. It goes back and forth a thousand times, it's got a frequency of a thousand. You can think of how waves go in and out of the ocean. You think of blinking, a light blinking on and off. In the body, you've got countless blinking on and offs, countless waves of varying sizes and varying speeds. And the faster these things go back and forth, the faster or the higher the frequency. And the body, the cells, the organs, the tissues, the structures, all have a certain frequency. By the way, the relationship of frequency to music means that every organ, every structure, every tissue, every cell in the body is actually playing a song. It's actually playing a tune. Every organ, every tissue, every structure has its own theme song, essentially. And the frequency of all the organs and structures and tissues in the body all begin at the level of a cell. And how this all occurs is so unbelievably interesting and fascinating. How is it that a cell generates frequencies? How is it that a cell generates electrical energy? We'll talk about that when we come back from our break and take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We got Dr. Elena George coming up at the bottom of the hour. She's the author of 
big medicine, the cost of corporate control and how doctors and patients working together can rebuild a better system. Dr. George will be sharing her very extensive knowledge about the medical model, prescriptions, medical care, and uh, her take on big medicine, as she calls it, at the bottom of the hour. We'll get your phone calls here. 844-236-6010 is our number. I will get your phone calls in this segment. So tomorrow we'll continue talking about frequencies. I want to tell you how frequencies are generated at the level of a cell. It's very fascinating. It has a lot to do with nutrition and has a lot to do with our diet. We kind of got away from talking about nutrition for the last few weeks because this, what I consider to be the really fundamental nature of vibration and electricity when it comes to good health, but nutrition plays a role as well. In fact, nutrients and, and, and vitamins and minerals, essential nutrients, the so-called Mighty 90 essential nutrients, work electrically. They work because they help uh, cells generate frequencies and electricity, and it's a really fascinating process. It has a lot to do with how we eat, what we eat, and what we don't eat, what we should be eating, what we shouldn't be eating, how, and how we're supplementing as well. I'll give you a clue. It has uh, something to do with minerals and electrolytes. But more than that, it has a lot. Uh, there's other things too, but minerals and electrolytes are key players in helping cells generate electrical energy. And that's one of the main, main reasons why you want to make sure that you're getting your Beyond Tangy, Tangerine, and Colloidal Minerals making sure that you're getting your potassium and your sodium and your magnesium so-called electrolytes. We'll continue talking about this very fascinating subject, electricity and frequency and vibration in the cells, as well as the relationship of nutritional supplements uh, to the electrical energy of the cell tomorrow as we continue discussing coherence and vibration and health on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Don in Ohio. Good morning. Welcome to the bright side. Don, what's up? Don, going once. Don going twice. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry, my uh, phone just broke yeah. up there. Hey, I was wondering, hey, what's up, I was, man? hey uh, not much. How you doing, Ben? I'm doing good. How can we help? Hey, I was I was reading um, recently that you can get uh, what what kind of looks like acne on on your chest from like a fungal overgrowth, mm. and uh, I, I can't. Mm. Do you know anything about that? Or? Uh, I don't buy it. Acne comes from inside, first of all. Fungus is always going to be involved in, or, or can be involved in inflammatory processes. But acne on the chest or on the back or on the shoulders or anywhere uh, below the neck needs to be regarded as a lymph problem. That means uh, something is getting into the, the lymph is your body's sewage system. It's your waste management system. Just like the blood pumps, uh, the, the blood delivers nutrients and oxygen to the different cells. The lymph drains away toxins. The lymph does other things too. But one of its main roles is to drain away toxins. So when you're breaking out on the chest or on the back or on the shoulders or anywhere down to your butt and groin area, you want to be thinking about lymphatic toxicity. The lymph becomes toxic usually through either liver problems or digestive problems. The liver is, of course, a digestive structure, so uh, you can basically assume that there's some kind of digestive health issue if you're breaking out anywhere below the neck. This is because of the lymphatic, the relationship of the lymph to these kinds of breakouts. So, as always, backtrack to digestive health issues. If you're breaking out in the sh uh, shoulder area, unless you're, unless you're shooting up uh, anabolic steroids, by the way, that's one way, you, that's another way that you can break out on the, on the back or on the, or on the chest area if you're uh, using anabolic steroids. And that's a very well-known problem among bodybuilders and weightlifters who use anabolic steroids. Cirrhosis of the liver can do it as well, but it's all basically working the same way. It's clogging up the lymph. When the liver becomes toxic, either from anabolic steroids or from uh, alcohol abuse or from, from prescription drugs or mo most commonly from foods, then the lymph can become clogged up and sticky and sludgy and this is where you get the kind of breakouts that you're describing. Uh, so I wouldn't be focusing on fungal infections, I'd be focusing on food. However, uh, as far as fungus goes, there's a very important connection between bacteria in the intestine, so-called good bacteria, and fungus. And this is the reason why people have fungal overgrowth. Bacteria kill fungus. That's where we get penicillin from. I'm sorry, uh, fungus kill bacteria. That's where we get penicillin from, and bacteria kill fungus. They, they kind of have this relationship where they each balance each other out inside the body, and when we drink chlorinated water, and we take antibiotics, and we drink fluoridated water, and we use pesticides or eat pesticides that are used on foods, we kill off our good bacteria, and fungus overgrow. So all of this is to say, get on the nightly essence. Get on a good probiotic supplement. That's the best way to handle fungus, and that's the best way to correct digestive and liver problems that are associated with... Uh, 
with breakouts along the chest also you, or on the back. Using uh, fiber and foods that help support the microbiome, those bacteria can also be helpful for you. Digestive enzymes can be helpful. Apple cider vinegar can be helpful. Of course, laying off any foods that cause digestive distress is also a very important strategy. You can also use fermented foods. And even just vegetables will help. Uh, uh, I like fermented vegetables, but even regular vegetables because of the fiber content and the nitrogen content in the veggies will help support a good, healthy microbiome. Get on the nightly essence, eat your veggies, make sure that you're using fiber, uh, grinding up flaxseed fiber, uh, your ultimate enzymes, apple cider vinegar, all of these are great ways to support the microbiome, to support digestive health and help clear out the lymph. You can also do lymphatic drainage if you have a uh, practitioner, an esthetician that you're working with, a skin health practitioner, they can do lymphatic drainage and that can also help you. And another really interesting way to help support lymphatic health is to hang upside down on one of those inversion devices. Does that make sense there, Don? How oh, yeah. That? Yeah, it makes, okay. it makes sense. Uh, thanks, Ben. Good deal. Have a great day. All right. Uh, let's see if we can get a couple more calls in. Ba -ba -ba. Let's go. Brian in New Hampshire. Welcome to the Bright Side, Brian. What's up? Hey, Ben. I just wanted to pick up on the subject that you just had in the first segment. It's kind of, uh, kind of interesting. But this has... Well, is this vibration study, uh, uh, would you say it's may maybe related to the concept of binaural beats? Uh, yeah. I'm not binaural sure. beats are interesting. That's a whole another interesting thing. Hemisync, have you heard of hemisync, the binaural beats? Yes. It, binaural beats are a way of generating brain frequencies by uh, adjusting the type of energy, the type of vibration or frequency that comes in the left ear with the uh, vibration or frequency in the right ear by balancing them out in a certain way. The brain will kind of subtract the two frequencies and create a third frequency. And if it's done correctly, you can actually generate what's called alpha waves or, or theta waves, relaxation brain waves. I'm going to talk. I'm going to spend some time talking about these brain waves here in the next couple of days. But basically speaking, the binaural beats are a way of supporting brain frequencies that are associated with relaxation and learning as opposed to brain frequencies that are associated with problem solving. You can actually, you can actually help stimulate any brain frequencies. You know, there's four major brain frequencies. They call them alpha waves or alpha frequencies, beta frequencies, theta frequencies, and delta frequencies. There's a couple other ones, but those are the four main ones. And by using these binaural beats, you can promote either alpha or theta or delta or uh, beta. Beta being associated with problem solving and focusing. So you can use hemisync to, to induce beta waves if you're trying to learn something or focus. If you want to go into a hypnotic state, you can use binaural beats to generate alpha brain waves. You can use uh, uh, binaural beats to generate theta brain waves if you want to go into a deeper hypnotic state. And if you want to fall asleep, you can use binaural beats to help generate delta brain waves. And I use them personally every day uh, via an app that I have on my smartphone. And I forgot the name of the app, but uh, you can just Google on your, go to the app store uh, on your smartphone and look up binaural beats. And there's lots of good apps that will actually generate binaural beats and you can use them for various things. If you want to learn or you want to go into a hypnotic state or you want to fall asleep. Does that make sense, Brian? You there? Did we lose Brian? Brian? Uh, I don't know where Brian went. I hope... I I, I no, I'm wrong. your bad. I'm sorry. I, I okay. was muted. No, <laughs> no problem. Does that like, make that sense? That was really helpful. Okay, good yeah, deal. Let me Thank you so One more thing after the break, if that's okay. You know what? I, I, gotta get, that I got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Brian. I'm sorry, but if you call back tomorrow, we'll get you first up, okay? We'll do Thanks it. So Thanks. Thanks so much for your call, buddy. Okay, take care. All right, we got Dr. Elena George coming up in our next segment. Her book is Big Medicine, The Cost of Corporate Control and How Doctors and Patients Working Together Can Rebuild a Better System. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You'll find all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for one-time $25 fee off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470 for more information. All right. So I am really excited to have our next guest on. Dr. Elena George has been on the program before. Her book is titled Big Medicine, The Cost of Corporate Control and How Doctors and Patients Working Together Can Rebuild a Better System. Dr. George is a board-certified ENT doc. She's a graduate of Princeton University 
as well as uh, Long Island University, and she's got her medical degree from Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York. She's accomplished, she's educated, and she's a very talented writer. Good morning, Dr. George. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you again. And thank you so much, and thanks for wanting to come back on the program. So for the listeners who haven't heard of you or haven't heard, uh, didn't hear the program when you were on, I think it was probably six months ago or maybe a year mm -hmm. ago now, um, give, us, give us a little background about how, how you got into medicine and that, then how you got into anti-medicine, if I could say that. <laughs> well, I have always wanted to be a doctor like most people, I think, who go into our profession. And I started off um, by wanting to be a cardiovascular surgeon, and I ended up as an ear, nose, and throat surgeon because I actually love the art as well as the science of medicine and being able to help patients and think outside the box and it seemed like the, and is the best specialty to do that because you get to see people of all ages um, with all medical issues, and it's a, just a joy to be able to do what I was put on this earth to do. And then how did you get into this? How long did it take you to understand that there was kind of a scam going on? Oh, wow. I say it started personally when my mom and dad um, became ill, and I had to navigate the system. And seeing how broken it was and how it was not about patient care, people were, were numbers, and it was one size fits all, it really opened my eyes to thinking that there must be a better way. And we started natural treatments with my mom, and she improved dramatically. And it was an eye-opening experience, and it allowed me to actually start doing my own due diligence. And it's not about drugs. It's not one size fits all. It's about fixing the problem, treating the problem, and the patient, and not just a you know, disease state. And that's how I started it. My practice has evolved since then. And I love what I do, and I'm passionate like you are about treating patients and educating them so they understand there's more than one way to get you better. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here, okay? Because I'm, a, I'm, a pharm I, I'm the pharmacy version of you. You're the doctor version mm -hmm. of me. I mean, we both are on the same page here. So I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. You mean drugs don't make me better? You mean my statin drugs aren't going to make me healthy? How does that work? What, what is it about drugs? I, I thought they make me better. Well, I thought to consider them a controlled poison. You know, they have a, a, a band of of efficacy where they work and not everything works for everybody everybody's chemistry is different everybody is an individual so it's all about getting to know your patient spending time mm -hmm. with them and figuring out what made them sick in the first place so you can make a treatment plan that's unique all right so you you come down really hard on this affordable health care act in your book which and oh, justifiably yeah. so uh, i'm i'm the same like i say i'm on the same page with almost everything you talk about in your book uh, you, you call Obamacare corporate-driven medical serfdom. Explain. It's all about taking away the control from the doctor and the patient. I'm old school. I learned and I took the Hippocratic Oath. Doctors may not do that anymore, but I was one of the classes that did. And it should be about whatever the patient and the doctor decide. It shouldn't be centralized. It shouldn't be an, an mm. algorithm-driven system. And it shouldn't be run by actuaries who stand to gain by the loss of of, you know, someone's going to win in this. It should always be the patient, and in this system, it's not. It's the government, it's their agents of the government, the insurance companies, etc. And you have to think about who wrote the bill. Doctors and patients were not in that room when that bill was crafted. It was the same interests that stand to gain by people being sick, staying sick, and making money mm. off of them. So it wasn't healers or healthcare professionals that crafted this thing. It was not vested interests. That's fascinating. Now, uh, explain what you mean by uh, health by algorithm or health by actuary. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure if your listeners heard of something called evidence-based medicine, but that is the template that decides how treatment options are given for the doctor to give to the patient and for the patient to decide about. And they're driven by insurance. I'm sorry, by big pharma. Really, they're the ones. What, what is evidence-based? Would explain what you mean by evidence-based medicine. It, it means it's driven by results of um, research. But you have to understand that the research that really gets underwritten is underwritten by the insurance companies. They have the money to, to create these um, research uh, protocols. And as we both know, you can change any, any answer you want, depending mm -hmm. on how you look at your data. So, again, there's a conflict of interest. If they're underwriting the drugs that they're selling and all of a sudden it's the best thing since sliced bread, 
I think people should question that. Why does the, um, the, uh, the, was it the trial lawyers always having these, uh, join this, this big class action suit for medications that cause harm? That's another cottage industry in it within itself. So I think that basically we've lost or we're losing the art of medicine where experience from the doctor, someone in practice for 20 years knows a lot about treating a patient versus somebody who is just running or using their, or treating patients based on what a drug rep comes in and tells them they should do. That's not what medicine should be about. So I, I uh, ran into a guy about a year ago. He, uh, he was working in a store, he was smoking a cigarette, drinking a Diet Coke, and we got to talking about Obamacare or Affordable Health Care Act. And he was telling me how much he loved the Affordable Health Care Act because it meant he got, he got his drugs for free and he got his office visits for, or, or inexpensively. He got his office visits inexpensively. And if he needed surgery, mm-hmm. uh, it would be subsidized. How, how could, what would you say to this guy smoking his cigarettes and, and drinking his Diet Coke who is not, I, I take it, not all that unusual from a lot of folks who think that somehow the Affordable Health Care Act is going to support, is going to be supportive of their health. Well, be careful what you ask for, because the health care that you're getting is not the same as mm. somebody who's paying for commercial insurance, or really, in reality now, someone who's paying out of pocket. They are getting a much higher standard of health care, and they're paying less than somebody who's on a commercial plan, and definitely doing much better than someone who's getting uh, their treatment from Obamacare. That is a substandard system, and if you look at how it's been crafted, how it's really become a two-tier system, you would understand this. The cancer treatment in our country, if you, God forbid, you're diagnosed with cancer and you have the Affordable Care Act, you can't go to Mayo Clinic, you can't go to the Cleveland Clinic, you can't go to, mm-hmm. to Sloan Kettering. They don't take your insurance. At this point, they stop taking Medicaid for the most part. They prefer to do commercial insurance. And I think it was Cleveland Clinic, actually, who actually put that in writing. You know, there's an article that came out about how they would preferentially like to see those patients who pay. That's a difference. Talk, talk to me about when you actually need it versus That's a theory. Huge. So, in other words, the Affordable Health Care Act doesn't mean Affordable Quality Health Care Act. It just means affordable health. Yeah, that's a very good point. All right, we've got to take a break. Dr. Elena George is our guest. Her book is Big Medicine, The Cost of Corporate Control, and How Doctors and Patients Working Together Can Rebuild a Better System. We're going to talk about some solutions to this problem when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will return right after this. On the bright side, I am pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Dr. Elena George about her book, Big Medicine, The Cost of Corporate Control and How Doctors and Patients Working Together Can Rebuild a Better System. Before I forget, Doc, uh, Dr. Mm-hmm. George, what is your website and how can folks get the book if they want? They can go to Dr. Elena, E-L-A-I-N-A, George, like the man's name, dot com, and they can read my blogs and also purchase the book if they like at that site. And there's tons of great information on your blogs. You're a very talented writer, by the way, Dr. George. Are, Thank you. You're still you're still practicing, correct? I am, and, and I'm a solo practitioner, so I'm out there on the front line. And are, do you take Medicare and and work with the ACA, work with the Affordable Health Care? I don't. I don't because I want to practice medicine using the Hippocratic Oath. At this point, if you take Medicare, you are guilty before before can assume to be innocent. And even if you undercharge somebody, if you don't charge them the allowed amount, that's considered fraud. And you can wow. be jailed if you do that more than three times. That's when I said, I'm done. I'd rather see these patients free, reduce the rate, barter, do what I have to do to help my patients see me without the oversight and the, the insurgence of the government. I'm done with it. Explain to the uh, listeners this whole idea of standards of care and how that fits into the ACA. Let's talk about the ACA in terms of the real, the real reason behind it. It's not about health care. It's about control. It's about control of the fix of the economy. It's a control of how patients access physicians. It's a, a centralization of the money. We're talking about patients, you know, you're getting subsidized. That's awesome. But if you actually make more money the next year, that will be clawed back in your tax return. Nobody tells you that. So nothing's free in this system. And the physician is held to just as rigid a standard as the patient. You have to treat the patient using these standards if 
for example, if someone has a diabetes or high blood pressure, there's only certain medicines you can treat them with. Mm. If you admit them to the hospital and they get readmitted within 30 days with the same diagnosis, the hospital won't be paid. There's all these sticks written into this law that actually makes it harder for people who are sick to get proper care. Nobody wants to take the risk of getting dinged and getting their, their fees reduced or being put in jail for or being fined for actually doing what they're supposed to do for the patient. And that's where the realness of it never gets told because doctors don't talk about it. We just do our jobs and we try to work around it. But it's at a position now where you have to decide if you want to practice medicine using the Hippocratic Oath or practice medicine being an agent of government. The, the health information technology, the electronic medical records are not the patient's friend at this point. Anything that I put or a physician puts in electronic medical records is not locked. The IR, IRS can access it. The Homeland Security can access it. Wow. If you have a Affordable Care Act and they find you committed fraud by your tax return and you're getting a subsidy, they're coming after you. If I write a prescription for, well, butrin, which is a type of antidepressant, but I'm treating my patient for to help them stop smoking, that well, butrin follows them. And if they want to get a, you know, a license off firearm, if they want to work for the government, the question wow. is, will it follow them as a crazy diagnosis, right? So these things are not, there's consequences for everything that's being done. And I'm here to tell you that you need to think bigger, broader, not just what's in it for you, but how it actually could affect you down the road. So now, now you have Congress wanting to repeal the ACA. What do you think about a replacement? Is, it's going to be the same thing, right? You know, I, if it were me, they'd need to scrap the whole thing and start over and let the doctors and the patients help craft the bill. Ultimately, it needs to be a fee-for-service, cash basis practice, you know, where the market rules. It's cheaper now to access health care in our system if the patient knows what the costs are than if an insurance company administers it. They're taking, it, they're taking money off the top, they're taking money from the patient, and they're denying care. That's what's going on. Here in Georgia, Blue Cross decided that they were going to decide what constituted an emergency. And if you went to the ER and they said, hey, that diagnosis is an emergency, we're not paying for it, they're now inserting themselves between the doctor and the patient, and the patient mm -hmm. is the one getting hosed. I'm really, you know, this is the reality what we're living in. They have a lot of power, and they're ruling the healthcare system at the expense of the doctor and the patient. We need to take our power back. So you have health decisions that are being made by bookkeepers and pencil pushers and, and, and insurance bureaucrats and people who have nothing to do with health, who don't know anything about health. They just know about Not bottom lines. All. Well, you know, they actually know that they are they have a conflict of interest, and if they deny care, they make more money. On my last blog, I have a, a, a picture of a graph of the growth of physicians versus administrators, and the growth of administrators to physicians have gone up 17 to 1 mm. over the past what, 10, 20 years. That's who's making the decisions, and their fiduciary responsibility is to the hospital, not, or to the insurance company, not to the patient. What is the morale that's associated with this among doctors, in your opinion, and the doctors that you know? It's horrible. And I've lost so many colleagues who've left the profession, and the, the suicide rate amongst physicians is 400 doctors a year committing suicide. Huh. since the passage of the Affordable Care Act. It's a disaster, and medical students, for that matter. We're under siege as a profession, and all we want to do is help people, and we're being thwarted. We're being criminalized, demonized. We want to cut off the take tonsils out for money. That's not what's happening. Seven cents of the health care dollar goes to the doctor. The rest goes to administration. It's not us that's causing the cost to rise. Right. It's, it's the system. We need to take our power back, and how we do that is to educate our patients that we need to work together. Let's cut the middleman out. Let's have direct primary care practices. Let's do medical cost sharing. Let's do barter, sliding scale. There's a growth of free market systems out there that people are really, really accessing the healthcare system and paying a fraction of what they spend when they use their insurance card.
So, so somebody's sick, say, they understand that if they're going to go to, if they're going to uh, try to take advantage of the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, that they're going to be stuck with certain protocols based on, as you say, algorithms and actuarial mm -hmm. scales and centralization of, of pharmacology, of pharmacological interventions and, and surgical interventions, et cetera. What is a mm -hmm. patient to do? Where can a patient find a physician who works the way you're, t the way you're describing? They can go to my website, drlanagegeorge.com. I have a list and links of all these other systems in place. American Association of Physicians and Surgeons is an example. Association of Independent Doctors. Jointhewedge.com. LibertyOnCall.com or .org. These are all websites that actually list doctors who are like-minded, who mm. work with the patients. And we're talking specialists, internists, everybody. Natural, you know, people holistic. There's a whole group of us and growing who are bucking this system, who want to practice medicine the old-fashioned way, and it's not going to be that expensive to do it. You know, that is, you that's tremendously online. exciting. That's oh, tremendously awesome. exciting. So that's is Dr. Elena George dot com. Is that correct? That's correct. Dr. Elena George, that's E-L-A-I-N-A-G-E-O-R-G-E, -E, Dr. Elena George dot com. And uh, I really encourage anybody out there who's interested in the subject or who's sick who, or who know somebody who's sick to really check out Dr. George's website. She's got a great blog and she's a really very, very talented writer. And also to check out the book, Big Medicine, The Cost of Corporate Control and how doctors and patients working together and rebuild a better system. Doc, you're one of the good, guy, good, good gals, I should say. <laughs> and thank you so much for doing this work. It's really, really important because doctors do have a special role to play. And I, I'm guilty a little bit of ripping on the medical model and, and lumping physicians into that. But there are, like you say, physicians who are dedicated to health and dedicated to patients and really want to do a good job. And unfortunately, they're hamstrung by the system, like we all are hamstrung by the system. The system is not out for the individual, and this is all we always run into this, where it's the institution versus the individual. And the individual is always going to lose that battle. Dr. George, you're awesome. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate it, and good luck Thank with your you. practice. Um, let's see here. One more time, Dr. Elena George. Uh, do, uh, uh, one more time on your website, DrElenaGeorge.com. Dr. Correct? Dr. Elena George com, correct. Okay, and thank you so much. Anybody can contact me. I'd be happy to speak with them. You take emails as well? I take emails, yep. And you, and you have a way, they have a way of communicating to you via your website? Yes, they do. And you, you do see patients in, in the Georgia area, if anybody's listening from the Georgia area? In Where Atlanta. are you in Georgia? In Atlanta? In Atlanta proper, mm hmm And they can just find you on the Internet? They sure can. Okay, you good deal. Go to ENT Center. That's the, the website number or name. Thank you so much, Dr. George. It's a pleasure talking to you. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks for your work, you too. too. All right, take care. All right, that was Dr. Elena George, the book Big Medicine, The Cost of Corporate Control, and how doctors and patients working together can, can rebuild a better system. Dr. Elena George is not only quite brilliant and a talented writer, she's also one of the, one of the good gals in the world of medicine. Her website, drelenagegeorge.com. All right, that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Tomorrow we'll continue talking frequency. We'll talk a little bit about nutritional supplementation and how you can support cellular vibration using nutritional supplementation. We'll do that tomorrow on The Bright Side. Please check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for more information about the longevity products. Also, truthtreatments.com for more info on our Truth Skin Health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.